Sabdarshi here and I welcome you back to our course on machine learning using Python. So we are using our family or Kaggle environment and last class we have looked at some of the important things about k-means in terms of its algorithm with an illustration. We have also looked at how k-means still holds relevance and what are some of the research areas where k-means is being worked upon. So in today's hands-on session, we are going to look at four key questions. One is how to fit k-means, how scaling affects k-means, what are some of the important parameters of k-means, and finally, we'll look at how can we use WCSS to find number of clusters. WCSS means within cluster sum of squares. All right, so we'll start with a data set called as age cell. Let's start by importing the same. So it is imported. Let's quickly look at its top few rows. Yes, so it has two columns, age and salary. And if you look at the shape of the data, then it has got 14 rows and two columns. Okay, so quite a toy problem to start doing your k-means. Before we do our k-means, Let's try to look at the data in a scatter plot and see whether there are some natural groups, right? Okay, now let's look at this. Okay, so you see that there are a group which is quite far from others. Maybe these are people who has retired and who are now on pension. So let me call this as a pension cluster, right? All right. There is a group here who have started their uh, journey in the career, maybe less than age 30, salary is little bit moderate, and once they're over 35, you know, and then maybe up to 55, you see that there is quite a steep rise over here, okay? So maybe this will be your early career cluster, this will be your mid-career or executive cluster, and this is going to be your pension cluster, okay? So maybe that is the intuition of your natural clusters. All right, now let's see how to fit k-means. So for k-means, let's import k-means from sklearn.cluster. Then let's initialize k-means with n cluster equal to 3 because we saw that there are three natural groups. Rest of the parameters we'll discuss in a while in our next question. Okay, and what we do now is we actually fit predict this. So basically this just tells me the cluster levels. Okay, so let me run this. Yeah, so if you run this, you should get a, a array of length 16 and that will have value of either 0, 1 or 2 corresponding to the three clusters. Okay, so we have got now this y k means let's now try to plot this. So what we are going to do is we are going to plot these all these three clusters or all these three points marked by different colors and we'll also add the cluster centers. Okay. So let us quickly plot this and see how this looks like. Yes. So what do you see? You see that there is a cluster which is marked in red over here. This doesn't look like the pension cluster. And this, you know, early career and executive cluster is quite mixed up. And these are your centroids all over the place. Okay. So what's going wrong here? Basically, if you see that the, the range of values are not comparable, right? So salary range is maybe 20 to 70 or 75, whereas, uh, you know, age range is 20 to 75, whereas salary is maybe 0 to 1, like 20,000. So essentially what is happening is maybe when it is less than 40,000, only, only it is based on salary. So when it is less than 40,000, you are saying it is one cluster. If it is 42, 80, 85, it is another, and if it is beyond that, then it is the third cluster. So how to fix this? Let's resort to scaling, okay? So uh, we'll use our standard scalar, which you have seen earlier, which brings uh, variables in same range of values. So initialize that, we then do a transform, then 
why after initializing k means we apply this on df scaled okay so let us run this now all right so it will be more clear when we when we visualize this yes so if you visualize now what do you see you see that yes the the, the pension cluster is very clearly identified there is some mix up maybe you know early and executive However, it is much, much well separated than what we presumed earlier. Okay, so one thing that you might notice is that these values are actually in range. Okay, so, so uh, you cannot actually make out what were the original values. So what you can go back, do is go back and plot using the original values over here. But let me just comment this line because cluster centers will be new scale. Yes. So now if you see it, it more or less matches with the clusters that we were thinking earlier, if, with the exception of these two maybe. All right. So this is how, you know, you know, scaling actually affects scaling. So this is a very, very important thing that you should look at. All right. So now let's look at some of the important parameters of k-means. So one of the important parameters is how do you initialize? So you can use k-means plus plus. So this is an algorithm where initially when you are choosing the random seeds, the random k values, uh, it, it takes extra care to make sure they are diverse, they are well separated. Okay. And random is of course by random sampling. And if you have some heuristic, then you can give those values of initial sheets in forms of ND array. Okay. A in it is number of times you will, you know, run k means with different centroid seeds. So as you remember, with different centroid seeds, you will get different results. All right. Uh, so uh, the final result will be, will be in terms of the one that produces least inertia. Inertia is again measured in terms of within mm -hmm. cluster sum of squares. All right. And maximum iteration uh, by default is 300. Now, k means data set also can be very, very large. And after each, each uh, computation, you know, you, you may have to, you may have to assign all those, all those uh, clusters and recompute your center. So this can turn out to be very, very computationally prohibitive. So like you do uh, in mini batch gradient descent, you can actually run k-means in mini batch. So you don't run k-means on entire of them. You run on some of them. You update the center. You, you again calculate the distance and that's how you go about it. So this is something if you're interested, you can very well look at. All right. Now let's look at k-means clustering on iris flower. So this is a very known data set. Okay. So where there are three class, three classes and four attributes. So let's, uh, you know, uh, import data sets and load iris and load both X and Y, okay? So one thing that is to be noticed is that uh, what is this values look like? So let's quickly look at that. Okay, so X actually is a, is a ND array where uh, each of the observations has four values, all right? And let us also look at Y. Yeah, so Y is a vector or an array which has values 0, 1, and 2 corresponding to these three species, okay? So initially, let us again do, do uh, okay, so first thing is we should scale. So let's do the scaling. And after scaling is done, let's first look at how the data looks like uh, in a scatter plot. Okay. So, you know, this is how the scatter plot looks like. So this is one of the classes which is quite well separated, but this green and blue are not that well separated. Now you might be wondering that there were four attributes, how we are plotting in 2D. So actually we have only selected the first attribute and the second attribute. So we can quickly change this to three, second and third. Okay, so if we change it to second and third, uh, maybe there the separation will increase or maybe it will decrease, but it will be different for sure. Though k-means will be applied on all the 
uh, features. However, uh, in, if you want to visualize, you can only visualize in 2D plane. Yeah, so now if you run this and see how this comes up, this is much more well separated, okay? Uh, so uh, this is one of the ways you can actually do feature selection as well for, for uh, your data set. Now let's look at how this within uh, cluster sum of square is to be used. All right, so within uh, cluster sum of square is what? So initially what you do is you find for <clears throat> each of the points, you basically find the distance from the center and then you sum it up uh, for all the clusters. So why there are three summations? The first summation is because there are four attributes, right, for iris. So these four attributes for that, so j equal to 1 to p means predictor. So this is your first summation. Second summation is number of points in the cluster. And third summation is you are then summing up all the clusters. So that's how, you know, you go about it. So WCS if it is WCS is high, that means uh, your clustering is not very good. However, the catch is that if you increase, you know, cluster centers by a lot, WCS monotonically decreases. So where do you stop? Okay. So if you have three cluster, this is how the equation will look like. So for the points in cluster one, you do a sum for points in cluster two. So this is just an, you know, just an expansion of this. Okay, now let's do this thing. Let's uh, let's actually run uh, k-means for different cluster values. So essentially, what we are doing is we are running it from cluster values of one to ten. Okay, so we are running k-means with n clusters equal to uh, varying from one to ten. So let's run this, and we are adding. This is a list. We are appending this WCS for each of the runs. Okay. All right. Now let's let's look at the plot, all right? Yes. So here is your elbow method where you have plotted based on number of cluster what is the WCS here, WCSS you are getting. So wherever you know there is a sharper plot, so here is a sharp drop, then here is a sharp drop, and then slowly it has flattened. So the elbow is actually forming over here. So you conclude three clusters is good for this, which matches with the data actually, where you already know that there are three clusters. Okay, so uh, uh, this is this was the basically the idea. Now let's use this uh, n clusters equal to three and run it. So this is your optimal number of k that you have got. Now let's again plot this. Okay, and see how the clusters look like. Yes. So this is how the clusters look like and you see that it is it doesn't classify that them not too badly. Okay. So that was the hands on. Uh, thanks for watching our video and uh, please, please feel free to keep your questions and we'll try our best to go through them and answer them. Thank you once again guys.